We got another yeah. amazing <laughs> guest in the house, Jameson <laughs> Newlander, Hello, everybody. actor, director, star in The Lost Boys, back Ooh. in the 80s, the new one, and one of the legendary Frog Boys. That's right. That's <laughs> the right. Frog Boys from The Lost Boys. That's right. But you were born in New York, from what I'm reading up on you. You know what? That's I'm sorry. That's a mistake in Wikipedia. That's a mistake? Yeah. I'm born in, out here in L.A. Oh, okay. Because I was go. like, I, I was going to yeah. ask you, you, you graduated Beverly Hills High School. Is that true or that's not yeah, true? No, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Uh, how far I should go down if, that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. if it started off wrong? We could verify it all. I don't, for some reason, I was mistaken in the last, like, uh couple uh, months that all of a sudden someone people think I was born in New York. I spent a, a bit of time in New York. I, I spent like 12 years in New York. So you're born in L.A.? Yeah, L.A. All right. I'm an L.A. boy. All right. So our, there goes my first question about New York. Then there it goes. Yeah, but there you anyways, go. And that blows the whole, your whole thing. Is the story different. about how you <laughs> became an actor true then? The whole story you had like leg braces as a kid. Yeah, you yeah, were playing baseball true. and people. Yeah. Tell us about your childhood, dude. How you, okay, okay. You that's grew all up true. with... Uh, Necrosis, no? Is that what it's called? Yeah, necrosis. This is good. See, that stuff is true, you know. Okay. So, so like in like when I was like seven, so this is like nineteen seventy seven. Yeah. Um, I uh, I just was limping. I had this limp, and and I was trying. You know, I was an active kid. I, I played baseball. I played different things, and 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 I just had this limp. And then we 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 went all kinds of doctors, and finally they figured out it's this thing called necrosis, where the in my case, the femur, you know, that little ball of the femur, or big, it's a big ball, actually, of the femur, it fits into the, the pelvis, you know what I mean? Yeah. This mm-hmm. kind of thing. So that femur, necrosis is where, like, it, it kind of dies a little, like, the, the, the tissue, the bone dies a little, and it kind of... No? It's hard to say. I'm not sure exactly. Okay. I think it's the actual bone that sort of, it dies, and then they, they have to, what they did is they set my legs 90 degrees. I wore a leg brace for... You I'm gonna get emotional. About you it. mean they broke your legs? No, no. They, oh. they. Um, I wore a leg brace that just kept my legs at 90 degrees. Oh. So if you, it's like walking around. I had my legs like at 90 degree at a 90 degree angle. You wow. Know? Yeah. I was a kid in high school, and you know this was grammar school, and I was lucky enough to have just a really great school. Everybody was really supportive. A couple of kids picked on <laughs> now, me. Now, in the thing, but... it said you played baseball like this, but someone ran for you? Yeah, I did. So You were just was... out there just... <laughs> and then someone took off for you? Yeah, exactly. That's it was a... great. That's great. <laughs> no, that's cool. Yeah, because I was an active kid and I wanted yeah. to play Little League and, you know, cr- you know, credit to my town, to Beverly yeah. Hills, actually. And Beverly Hills. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Ilan Sassoon, you know, of the Vidal Sassoon, uh, you know, um, empire, you know, hair yeah. empire, you know, Know, but yeah. this guy, right? Anyway, the, so the son of uh, Vidal Sassoon was the guy who ran for me. Hey. He was on my team. You know, that's, oh, that's wow. what else for you. you yeah, remember this. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'll just run. It's fine. Yeah, that's all I for the do. exercise. Yeah. I'll hit you run. Did it's they like find like the kid who couldn't hit? And make him run for you? Or like, I didn't was that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't well, this him. guy can't hit, and he can't run. We got to put them together. Yeah, we, like, now we got the ultimate player. It's like the Reese's, you know. They actually had a cheat code you didn't even know. I bet that's what happened. And I, thought, I thought they were just being cool, but yeah, you know. dude was super fast. <laughs> yeah. So that said, it inspired you that you wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon when you were a kid. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, your mom told you, you better get a job. Basically, right, start yeah, exactly. acting to pay yeah. for to like, be a I don't doctor. Have to no. For that, you know. <laughs> so that led you into actually doing commercials. And what was your first job being an actor? Um, I booked a uh, commercial for uh, Pearl Vision, you know, you know this uh, company, you know, glasses. And uh, it was a big commercial for me. Pearl Vision was a big thing at the time, not in L.A. for some reason. Uh, so I didn't never even saw it until like years later. But was it a national commercial? Yeah, national commercial. Oh, okay, so you really got paid. Yeah, it was it was really sweet. And it was so it's like. You know, I'm this kid, you know, and all of a sudden I booked this commercial. And so, uh, you know, all the money for pictures and classes and massages. I mean, I mean, legit massages. You know what I mean? Like, actual. actual <laughs> keep loose. This was the 80s. So we'll get into that 90s. Right, we'll see yeah, what happens. It was a different why time. You, different why time, you skipped but, out on 15 years of Hollywood and came back? Yeah, but that's right, let's, man. Let's stay in this. Yeah. <laughs> So, so anyways, anyway, so so I got inspired. I mean, actually, to tell you the truth, like there was this kid on my block. You know the show, uh, Press Your Luck. Remember that that game show? 
And mm-hmm. it was like a, it was like no whammies. You remember this thing? Anyway, the the host of that, his his kid was a good friend of mine on in on my block, and and you know so he goes he needed new skates we were all skating we made these it was the 70s you know or yeah. like early seven or late 70s early 80s we made like skating routines out in the street you know and so he <laughs> wanted new skates and his dad was like oh i'll put you in a commercial and you'll make like five thousand bucks and i was like okay. <laughs> i want to get in on this like you yeah. know help help uh, help me out here so and uh so i um anyway that was part of it too i want to make that bread you know what i mean you're yeah. a kid you hear you like five thousand bucks like as a kid, you know, so... So was that how you got into commercial? Like, you just yeah. your neighbor? Well, he was like, I'll throw you in one. I mean, it's complicated. No, he didn't do... He didn't help me out. I mean, you know, he, he helped his kid out. And he was in a commercial. He was in, like, a Top Ramen commercial, like a Cup of Noodles commercial. Nice. It was cool. It was cool, you know. <laughs> Good actor, actually, this guy, Jason. Anyway, he... Um, so, yeah, so my mom was dating an actor. And mm. so she got friendly with his agent. You know, I don't mean friendly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, she, you know, just got friendly with his agent. And his agent didn't care about him that much because he was this guy that, you know, there wasn't that work, much work for this guy. He was in his 40s or whatever. I mean, you know, and, um, but I was a kid. I was 14. And at first she hated me, his agent. She was like, you, you, you look tired, you know. Because you know? I have like a droopy eye. I don't, know if you, I don't know if I still do, but my eyelid is kind of like, not droopy, but like bedroom eyes or, you know, kind of thing is that. They call it. I don't know. They call it. <laughs> That's right. a good positive spin yeah. for it. But so, like, I people thought I was stoned a lot of time before I even did anything like that, and just kind of like because I, I would do that. So she was like, "He looks like he's sleeping," you know. <laughs> so. But then it worked out for you because then you got into horror films. Yeah. So you know, it's like the commercial is good, and I got, and then I got a real agent, you know, a, a theatrical agent, and I did, you, uh, you know. Yeah. The first. What was the first movie you did? Well, okay, so the first job job I did was, like, for this Lutheran channel or something like that. I don't even know if it's even listed on my on my IMDb credits. But then I did a movie with um, with River Phoenix, yeah. uh, movie of the week, uh, with Tuesday Weld, who's an old-time actress, uh, you know, and River Phoenix. Um, we I shot one day with River Phoenix, and he was great. He was awesome, you know, thrilled to have another kid on set with him, and... We played football and, and all that kind of stuff. It was great. And and that was like, but that was just one day. You know, it was, that was the kind of thing. It was like, I, I was kind of working a lot. I didn't quite yeah. realize that I was working a lot. But it wasn't, it was a long time between jobs. You know, it was like that job. And then you just get callbacks and you try and you're busting at that age. And, you, you know, eventually I, I got some more jobs. And then eventually I got Lost Boys, which was only two years later. But to me, it seemed like an eternity. You know? Did you stay in touch with River, River Phoenix at all? Or have a I didn't, I mean, personal relationship with him until... You know, you know I, at the time, I wasn't good at keeping in touch with people. And there wasn't, like, Facebook and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, or Instagram. And, you know, so, so you know, I would have loved to keep in touch with him. I, I When he died, I was, like, I mean, it was sad, of course, for all sorts of reasons. But I was, like, I, I kind of thought that one day we would make, like, a cool team, you know. Because yeah. also, if you look at, there's a clips of that movie on uh, on the internet. And he he and I were cool together, I thought. I was this yeah. sort of, like, tough kid. Like, I had, like, this jet black hair, and I was smoking a cigarette and being all tough. And he was a little better. He was a little he was a little cooler yeah. you know, to his mom and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he was he's a legend. Died outside of the, the Viper room, right? And yeah. All that, so yeah. a, lot of, a lot of stuff with that. A lot of... Did you get into any... I mean, you're basically with all these childhood 90 stars yeah. that went through a whole bunch of yeah. shit, basically. Yeah. Did you get any in, in any of that while you, you know were what? out there? Like, what I'm, I'm kind of stories you got, or were you saved from all that? Or, like, because... Yeah. Tell us you're about born. your drug problem. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get drugs, right? Okay, so the thing is this. Like, I was, um, I was just a kind of a good kid, you know, when I, when I went into this. I was a good student. You know, I was even a 4.0 student, I think, when I started... You know, you dropped a little, you know, when I was doing it. But it's like, I I didn't really know how to party, you know. I, I mean, it, and for people who do know how to party, it may be hard to comprehend that I just didn't quite grasp it. I, for me, life was about going to school and then I got auditions and I was like, if I got jobs, it wasn't about like, cool, you know, I can go out and party. It was like, I better do a really good job with this job. I want to learn my lines. I want to, you know, I didn't think about the, the stuff, the kind of stuff outside of the set. 
that goes on. And I think it hurt me actually. I mean, when I say hurt me, there was nothing I could do about it. I didn't know how to operate that way. You know, yeah. if that makes sense, you know? Right. So, it, I mean, then in, I went to college, I went to NYU and, you know, started to learn how to party a little, yeah. <laughs> you know, so if you're, I mean, you had that movie. Um, then you had, you were in a movie with the young Jason Bateman, right? Yeah, well, I did, uh, I did um, Valerie. It was it was called Valerie at first, and the Hogan family because they dropped Valerie Harper off of it. But mm. and that was his show. That was Jason Patrick's show, and we did. I did a week on that show. It was awesome. He was on a Danny Ponce. I don't know if you remember who he is, and you know these are kids from the eighties. You know. Yeah, and then you were in the Lost Boys. Let's talk about the Lost Boys now. You know that's the big one. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're up boy. To. So Lost Boys was this crazy thing where it's like. All of a sudden, it was a different. I was in a different league, you know. And so I was auditioning a bunch. I had seen this casting director before. Marianne Doherty was kind of known for discovering people, and so I think I was on. I was on her radar. I had, you know, gotten close on another movie recently before that. Also, Schumacher, uh, the director, you know, Joel Schumacher. He he was good friends with my acting teacher, which was great. And he spoke at my acting class. And even though I didn't, you know, it's like. A director like Joel Schumacher speaking at an acting class, you know, everybody's like wanted to ask a question, you know, they're wanting to like, you know, introduce themselves to Joel Schumacher. He had just done, he had done um, St. Almost Fire. So that was, it was really big at that point. And, um, and I didn't really get to ask a question. I sort of felt like I blew it, you know, whatever. But then when this came up and I met him, I was able to talk about that and talk about my teacher. And, you know, and so we had some common ground there, you know. So you that's kind of was cool, you know. And then I saw Feldman in the, in, in the callback, I saw Feldman in the, the lobby. That's where I met Feldman, actually. At the and, callback? Yeah, at the callback. So it was like... They saw me. Did and, you guys read it together? Yeah, we ended up reading together for the okay. callback. Yeah, yeah. so c- kind of they were they were pairing us, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that we didn't realize it. But so what happened is they they loved me right away, like Schumacher, and I really connected. I was just like I was on my game at that time. I had I wore like my dad's military jacket, which is what they recreated in the movie, actually, mm-hmm. like the dice on the sleeve kind of thing. It was cool, and I was like I had a bit of swagger. I was doing hundred push ups a night was like my thing, and so I I was built pretty i had a pretty good build yeah. and and i was like do you want to punch me you know i was like you know i was like 15 at the time you know just cocky <laughs> you know, I was like, punch me come on punch me you know, I mean? you know it's like any anything you know anything you can do in the room you know what i mean like yeah. just to get your in notice or whatever so he he loved all that and he loved my kind of vibe and stuff i was like uh so there was this wave, and I, I was talking to Keith Coogan. You know who Keith Coogan is? Uh, he was in, like, Adventures in Babysitting and the he, in The Babysitter's Dead, you know, that one, the Don't Tell Mom and The Babysitter's Dead. Oh, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. in so many things. Like, when I was growing up, I saw him everywhere. So I just did a, a, a little interview with him where I was interviewing him, and we were talking about the fact that when he was young, being a child actor was about just... It was called jump and shout. This is like a thing that they talked about. Jump on your mark and shout your line. And that was it. <laughs> and then, you know, that was like, that was all that was expected from the, you know, the kid actors. So in the 80s, what started happening is this wave of New York actors started coming in. And I wasn't a New York actor, but I was, my teacher was a New Yorker. I was trying to be New Yorker. I loved like Pacino and, you know, I was like almost pretending to be a New Yorker kind yeah. of. And judging by your Wikipedia, yeah, exactly. Here it works. I can finally convince them, you know. (laughs) The world, the world (laughs) believes me now. So, um, yeah, so, so I was this, I had this kind of like tough vibe, you know, like the vibe I had in the movie. It's like it wasn't really who I was at the time, I was a kind of a little nerdier kid than that, but I just was kind of like playing that New York kid a little bit, you know, so. That's, I think, what did it for me. That's what got me into the movie, you know. But but also Feldman, um, Feldman and I connected, and that was big for Schumacher really l- wanted that connection. You remember what you guys did in the audition? Or, like, anything that stands out that's like, oh, that's how, yeah, I think, we got that. I think the audition, <laughs> I think the audition was when we first started the thing of, like, looking, checking in with each other. You know, that, that if you see, if you look at the movie that, we always and Joel then would like bring it up that some so he, you know Sam uh, Corey Haim would say something absurd or whatever you know or that we thought was absurd 
and we would look at each other and then we would <laughs> and I think that is something we kind of developed from the audition which yeah. was cool Feldman's really interesting I mean he's a really actually fun actor to work with it's always been really fun for me because he's really creative and he's it was a lot of fun you know working with him uh, you worked with a lot of other actors on that movie too, but you said uh, how many scenes were you in, or did you work with everybody? Because there's a lot of actors in the Lost Boys. Like, yeah. So like Kiefer, unfortunately, was someone I didn't work with that much. We yeah. have a one moment where we like pull his hand into the light and it burns. You know, if y'all remember <laughs> that, and and it was cool and everything. But and then I remember on set uh, hearing him talk about how he wanted to kill the guy on the beach, how how he wanted to like bite his head. You know, and so that's the only interaction I had with Kiefer, those two moments. <laughs> and then, but so he Evan chose how to, he chose how to end his scene? Or well, how he, to, you know, Joel was always talking about wanting input from us. You know, he wanted like, you know, you know, what kind of equipment do we want as Frog Brothers? And I assume they're just doing the same thing with the Lost Boys of like, you know, a lot of the Lost Boys performance was, was just them hanging out and doing stuff and maybe Joel would suggest something and they would do something cool. You know, there wasn't that much dialogue in those scenes, you know, like yeah. Billy Worth, I think has one line in the whole thing, but he's like everywhere. You know, you think of Lost Boys, you think of Billy Worth, you know? So, and that's, I think how one line, what's that? He's got one line. Yeah. One line. <laughs> um, you missed sucker. I think is his only line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With, with the death by Syria thing. You know? <laughs> he's like the face of it. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. Like he, everybody, you know, so, it's funny, you know, and so he Joel was into that kind of uh, input, and so I think that's what happened is is that you know Kiefer was like, you know, I want to I want that bald guy, I want to I want to bite his head. You know? When you guys shot it, did you, were you like it's gonna be it's gonna be a great movie, people are gonna love this, or were you like all right, know. it's another job, like you were just like yeah, it was really just another job. I mean, for me, it was a big movie, yeah, but. Ha- there's no way to know because you start thinking that something's going to be iconic or something and then it's and then it's going to flop, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get self-conscious about it and you're like, Oh, is this, let me say this, this line iconically, you know, so you just got to do it. You got to stay focused and do it. I mean, you know, when any, it came out, it was a big hit when it came out, like in the theaters, it was pretty big. I mean, it, it How, was like, I think it, it didn't blow it out of the water. They didn't, they didn't blow it out of the water that summer when when they came out. Yeah. It wasn't until it was on video. It became it was number one video for years, and that's really where its fame came from. I mean, people people loved it when it came out, but it wasn't it wasn't like, you know, it was only running. I think it only ran for I think three weeks or something like yeah. that. Is that was that like your big? You had a big red carpet moment on when it came out. You guys did all that. Like, you know, was what? that an eighties movie? Premiere type of situation. Did you, you know how to party that? by that point? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. This is it. I didn't know how to party by that point, and I didn't quite realize the significance of the premiere. And so I was in New Jersey doing a play, doing uh, Brighton Beach Memoirs. I don't know if you've heard of that play. Neil Simon, you know, playwright, big comedy playwright, and. I was off doing theater. I was like, I'm a theater guy. I'm, I did this movie, and that's coming out, and I'm doing theater. I didn't quite realize that I should have been there at the premiere. So, oh, wow. So I kind of missed that moment. The agent hmm. didn't tell you you need to be no, there? No, I mean, they were like, well, you can fly back for the premiere. And I was like, ah, no, I, whatever. I, they really should have just been like, you need to be at the freaking premiere. Right, for <laughs> sure. Mean? So that's no. what you mean by it maybe held you back a little bit by yeah, not well, knowing. I didn't, I didn't understand that aspect of it. That, that like, to me, it was about doing a good job on set. I knew my lines. I'm a good actor. You know, like I'm, I'm studying my part, you know, I didn't quite realize that a lot of the action, a lot of the other jobs come from, you know, you after doing cocaine in the room. You don't got this job. You start cocaine. Great. You know, like, let's do another job, man. Like, wait a second. Yeah. The studious guys back in the room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I mean, and what I kind of realized is that it's all partying. I mean, you know, to use that term, maybe it seems like almost like dated, like in the nineties, we use that term a lot, you know, but it's like, it's all partying. You know, I looked at, I have this, this sort of technique I've developed that I call the George Clooney technique where I'm, you know, out in public, if you're on a red carpet or whatever, you're just partying. You're just partying. I, I watched George Clooney do it, you know, and it's like at the Oscars, that's all he's doing. He's partying. There's a camera. He's talking to the camera like it's a, someone at the party, you know, this kind of thing. He's asking questions like he would do to be charming, whatever. You know what I mean? That's all it is. And I think that's what life 
is really. And that's what I think this business is. I don't know. These are big statements now. <laughs> I don't need to like make you know, these huge statements. But I kind of think that that's what it's about. Now it's about socializing yeah, and socializing connecting the people. and making exactly. connections right. and being around the parties. Even if you're, you know what I mean? Maybe you just... Throw some water in your drink. Like, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, totally. yeah, sure. Pretend you're partying. You're partying. Pretend you're partying. Act yeah, a little exactly. woozy, you know? <laughs> You'll be fine. Get yeah. some jobs. Because yeah. I've had people tell me that. It's like, ah, the people that work on, you know, sets and all that stuff, they party all the time. It's like, that, there's no way that you can yeah. be productive doing all that shit. But I guess, you know? I think it's part of it. And, you know, I, I was like, um, you know, as it's kind of, this is kind of related, but I did a movie last year um, uh, called Mr. Manhattan. It's a Christmas kind of movie. It's going to be coming out, even though it's a Christmas movie. It's coming out in June, I think. But, you know, it's a, a feel-good kind of thing like that. And the, the two leads were married, really talented, um, Carlos and Alexa Vega. Um, Carlos is from the, that band Big Time Rush, you know, which I didn't follow. But he's a great guy, great guy, brilliant actor. And, and she was like, it's, it's some really emotional stuff. And she was like, I can't be emotional between takes if I'm do, being emotional on camera, which was something really interesting that I heard. A lot of people are like, I got to keep it going, you know? Yeah. And so I think there's something to that, that you almost have to party as hard as you're working mm. to kind of balance it out or something sure. like that. I think that's probably one of the hardest things about an actor to get truly emotional on set, cry yeah. and all the, I don't even, I can't even imagine bringing up those emotions that aren't really there, but mm. then, you know, while on on the camera, it seems as if you do care and you are upset and stuff like that. Yeah. That that has to be the hardest part. You ever had to cry on? Did you have to cry yeah. on, on demand? I the thing is, I can do it now. I couldn't do it for a long time, and I was I I I, I revered actors that could do it, that could cry. I mean, there was I I, have, I went to high school at Beverly High with um, a woman named uh, Kelly Williams. I don't know if you've heard of her. She was on the practice. You know, really talented. I and love the practice. You're talking about the TV show, right? Yeah, the TV show. Well, I mean, I don't, I didn't watch it, so I don't really know the character, but really beautiful. You know, she was really beautiful and, you know, she could cry anytime, you know. And so Who she cries on like, the camera all the time. That was her. Yeah, no, she was. Okay, <laughs> I think she was probably crying a bunch then, but also like her, the job she got leading up to it, she was always like, I remember she was in an elevator in some scene and she just starts crying you know and i was like <laughs> I, I, I was with someone they were asking her like how do you do it and she was like i don't know i just get sad <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> I was thought that was like, well what? so now that's that's kind of my technique is so now that i've been a dad this is how it changed so and i, I can make i might get emotional now talking about it but now that i'm a dad and i've been you know i've been um really ushering these two little souls, you know, through life. And I've developed a certain degree of empathy that I didn't have, a certain emotion, set of emotions that I didn't have. Now, it's not like I can cry like that. There are times where I'm like, oh, no, here I am saying I'm all emotional, and then I can't, you know, it's not there. But it is there, and it's there if I... If I think of things, you know, like right now, I'm getting it a little just thinking yeah, about no, my I kids, see it. you know, yeah. and yeah. it's, it's real. Like, that's the thing. It's real. All the times when I've tried to do it technically, you'd still have to have some technical ability to be like, you know, okay, so I'm tearing a little bit. And so, you know, I, I could turn that into something that sounds like, I'm you know what I mean? Like I could, I could push it a little bit yeah. and, and, and I still think the audience picks up that it's pushed a little bit, but sometimes they need it. You, if you look at an actor's performance, even a brilliant performance, you can still, if you look closely, you can find times where they're not nailing every moment, you know? So you can't, I don't think you can nail every moment, but, you know, if you can get that emotion flowing enough, then I think it sells it. How do you remember First your all, lines in those it, moments? It does get tricky because you do get kind of lost in things. Hopefully... In an ideal world, you know your lines well enough that you, you know, in college we used to you learn your lines and then you play patty cake and you, you try, you know what I mean? So it's like you try to learn your lines independent of, of, of the meaning. Dang, that's how you be doing it at NYU? That's one of the things. Lines and patty cake, that's the trick. <laughs> well, lines and patty cake. You have to really know your lines for that, you yeah, know, for so, sure. that, so that you can throw yourself into that and the lines are still there. You know what I mean? You know what I always wanted to ask an actor? Do you get lost in these characters that you guys play? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like when you're just in daily life, something 
like triggers all these different characters that you've learned over, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, do they come up naturally sometimes? And how do you know who you are? Or great like, question. how do you, you know, yeah. differentiate with who's who? Cause you've That's played so question. many people. Yeah, totally. Uh, so interestingly enough, I haven't gotten this question that much, but um, Monday I, I spoke for a, like a high school or uh, college drama class and someone asked me something like that. And my answer was, and, and it may change as I think about it, you know, but my answer is that you don't, I don't differentiate that well. I, these things become part of me wow. and then, and then there's, they're kind of part of me. And, and it, it's not like completely it's not, not binary where it's like it's part of you or it's not it it maybe fades in and out or like you said like something may come up and and it's not like i think it's not like i'm oh i'm alan frog you know but these elements of these characters become part of my personality i think yeah. but you so are, if you play a superhero you are alan frog you know what i mean like yeah. forever you will be right and, that and there's, character there's, there's, in time yeah and so and, and there's jokes in the strokes to that painting you know that the painting that you know that role you know that are still part of me you know so when you play a superhero and you're being approached by a bully do you punch him in the face because <laughs> well, your right. character will usually punch him in the face or I mean, do you, know. you resort to maybe who you are and maybe that's not your method to dealing with things well that's a good point in illustrating that they don't really i mean that you you still have a self in there somewhere that that's guiding you yeah so i guess that's right like i i'm not you don't, you don't you don't get lost so much but i think some people do i think you have to walk that line i think you, have you ever it? been on a set with a method actor that never broke character and it was <laughs> annoying everybody <laughs> i haven't i haven't but i mean i did in theater you know in theater people would do that backstage and, and stuff like that which is a little more understandable because you have to live in that world you know like on a film to for someone to be that character I think it's cool if, you know, like Sean Penn, right? That's like the most famous version of it that he right. had to be Jeff Spicoli, you know, the whole time. And like, but he did a great job, you know, so I can't knock it. Like Spicoli's it, it, a classic right. character. Yeah, classic. Yeah, he, he's Spicoli's amazing, crazy. right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, I can't knock it as a technique, you know, but it is bizarre when someone's trying to, to really do that. Yeah. Did you see the, when Jim Carrey played did he do that? Man Over the Moon? And never broke character as um yeah what's his name um uh, damn, damn I'm fucking blank on his name Andy, I know Andy yeah, Kaufman Andy yeah. Kaufman yeah, yeah. Andy Kaufman. Go, yeah but then yeah. he got into character as that dude that Andy Kaufman played like the the old yeah that dude crazy, that's crazy dude like so he was like three levels away he, from and he would be that guy when he was that guy he would be that guy and like literally the director was like please I need to talk to Jim. <laughs> like, in this really? documentary, oh yeah, the, 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 the director was like, it's going, yeah. like, he's driving me crazy. He's like, I need to talk to Jim. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Jim's not here. Yeah, like, like, Jim wasn't, yeah some like, of the co-stars the, were like, that's not how he to, was. But to the, yeah, but to the point, <laughs> though, of go. that, his family came in and talked to Jim Carrey for closure of, like, talking to their dad. Like wow. his daughter, Andy Kaufman's daughter wow. came in and like That's talked trippy. to Jim Carrey as her dad. That was a waste oh, wow. of time. And like got closure. <laughs> wow. And got closure on, <laughs> on like her life with, with her dad, really which I was like, trippy. whoa. That was the biggest thing I took out of the documentary. Yeah. I was like, That's crazy. That's a, that's the surprise right there. Yeah. Wow. That That's was wild. Cool. So if you haven't seen it, you should the, see the document. The movie's great in itself, but the documentary about it, because Jim Carrey held on to the to the footage of this for like years. He did he wouldn't release it. That's so wild. And like then he just released it. But shit, besides the Lost Boys, man, you were in the blob. We just I watched some yeah. clips from that. They're gonna remake the blob, I heard. Yeah, what do you think about I that? Mean, well, I mean, you know, the, the, it was already a remake, you know, from the... Well, yeah, yours you know. was a remake from the 50s. Yeah, so it's like, I, I don't feel like, like, oh, they shouldn't remake it. It's like, I benefited from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like hypocritical, you know. Are they yeah. giving you a role you in the You trying to get one? back in the blob, or did you I, die in the blob? I did not die in the blob, actually. Um, I, I sacrificed my green screen accidentally because I... I cut my hair <laughs> uh, and I wasn't supposed to. And so they, I think they cut out my death. 
Mm. At least I think that's what happened. But in any case. Um, so the death's not on camera. You can come back. Yeah, I like it. You that's can be back in the new one. Are they doing a sequel or is it just a remake? I don't know. Just when I was doing you know, probably research a for the remake. show, I was just seeing a remake. I got to get in that. It's like that and also Lost Boys. They were trying to make the Lost Boys movie, another Lost Boys movie. There was. Oh, a, they got to make a Lost Boys TV show. You know, soon, I'm pitching you know? a Lost Boys TV show Hell right yeah. now. Frog Brothers TV show. So you know, Frog we'll Boys? Yeah. Oh, Would that, that be good? Be good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As you a like good vehicle for, yeah, me and Corey. Yeah. yeah. It would That'd be, be cool. sweet, yeah. So, you know, we'll see. We're trying to put it together. It's hard. It's hard. Hollywood's tough right now also, uh, you know, with like different things are moving around. How'd you and, go through? How was um, it for you during the strike? You like I the mean, deal we, they signed? I mean, I, I'm not great with details, so like, I, I, it seems good. I don't know. It, it, you know, a lot of people have problems with it. I, I'm not sure. You what know, about like, you, it seems Alejandro? Fine. I'm not sure either. You're not sure. <laughs> 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 what you, happened? What was? Do you know any of the changes? Or are you just like, bah, I didn't read someone it. Someone was telling me about <laughs> some of the. <laughs> I, I can just work again. Sounds great. Yeah, that, that's I what thought I was it was at, more you know. about streaming. No, streaming. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's was, right. that was one yeah. of the streaming and AI and AI. Yeah, and AI. That's right. And also, my my sister in law was just telling me that uh, she's an actress as well, and she was saying that there was something they did with like that you can shoot a if you have like. They're shooting stuff really quickly now in some things they're doing, like like 150 episodes in like six months or something Damn. like Damn. that. I, or something. There's like a yeah. technique of doing that. And so the, now you can take care of like a, a day player. If they're in like three episodes, you can take care of them all in three days rather than having it be a, a week per episode or something like that. There's mm -hmm. like a, a restriction that's come off. So there's a, we're going to earn a little bit less somehow, day players and oh, stuff. Okay. I have another question for you. So... Bruce Willis sold his consciousness or something like that, or I know he has he's he's sick and therefore he was worried about working in the future and things like that and providing for his family. I think he sold his voice and his likeness. Yeah, he sold his likeness. Oh, I so see. Uh -huh. what? What does that really mean? Yeah. I don't know if you even know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, what I, what I have sort of heard about this is that. I mean, probably what you know, too, is, you know, I probably know about the same, which is like, yeah, like they can do that now. You capture, you, you go and you do scans for a bunch of days or, or, or a bunch of hours or whatever. I don't even know. And and then, yeah, and then they have you. And then you, you can, can use his voice and animate his character to do anything. Now, yeah, I guess. All they need is the rights to his voice and they can make him in that's any so, that's animated another reason movie, so did like he, animated did show. Did they buy that or did they, they lease that? Yeah, that? I'm not sure. Or, that's know, a good question. I'm not sure that's one of the things that we're yeah. striking with the actors because imagine you're an extra it's like oh, standing behind this green screen and then they got you it's like they got you for life yeah yeah exactly exactly that, so that was one of the big issues that they sort of figured out I mean, what do you, like, mean? you can't figure it so imagine you're an extra and Dark Knight Rises whatever they do a bunch of stunts where you're behind a green screen they got your face so they throw it in AI and they can use you f as an extra <sighs> for eternity Damn, an oh, eternal girl. extra? Yeah, eternal extra. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and you don't get paid <laughs> shit either. What's the eternal extra clause? I don't know. That's what, they're, well, that's that's what they're fighting. Well, now I should have read the contract. Like, I don't yeah, know shit. shit. I mean, the thing is, like, the thing is, it's like if you think about commercials, <laughs> you know, it's like back when they were starting commercials, they were like, "Cool, we'll shoot it once and then we'll play it," you know. And then Screen Actors Guild came in and was like, "Eh, you can't quite do that. You're gonna have to give them a little bit of bread every time," you know. I feel like it's something like that where they're like. Uh. You when did that quit. happen? Was that always a thing for you? Like you said, you had a national commercial, you were getting yeah. paid, so it was already a deal. By the time I was doing it, it was that this probably happened in the 60s, 50s or 60s. That mm. I think that they, you know, that it's like the, you know, what's the big example of the guy who sold refrigerators? That like famous guy, you know, who was like Mr. GE or whatever, <laughs> you know, that like, yeah. you know, and I remember hear, hearing one of the, uh, like one of the SAG reps talking about it, and they're like, these people are sales people and instead of having to go around and go into people's homes you know they do it on the tv but they still sh their pay should reflect that they're going into people's houses you know even though yeah, yeah. you know so i think it's kind of kind of like that maybe and moving from <laughs> film to digital how does it feel as an actor now that you have unlimited takes does it feel that some actors take takes for granted you know, it, that's an interesting thing. Like, so when I was on Bone Tomahawk, uh, is a good example. So it's like they got three cameras rolling at once, and they, um, 
you know, there were times where actors were dropping their lines. I mean, no judgment. I mean, there was some dif difficult scenes and stuff. They might drop a line and they'll be like, it's cool. And they just keep rolling. And the actor will be like, okay. And then go back to it, you know. So that's different than the old days where they would, they would cut it, say they want to save the film. You know, it's like they just kind of keep it rolling. And I think that the positive thing in that situation was that you know, they didn't have to go back and do a whole new take, you know, and make the actor feel like he screwed up or whatever. They just kind of, you know, let it go, and then it's fine. You know, uh -huh. they just cut out that portion. You know, that you ever been on where it's like, this is the last bit of film? Yeah. You got to get it on this take <laughs> or it's over. Yeah, either that or this is the only time we can be at this location and we have <laughs> 20 minutes left oh, and we shit. have three shots or something like that. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's that's really, that's the most stressful stuff, I think, mean, <laughs> you know, because then you still, have to, you still have to bring it, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> you still have to bring the acting, you know, but you're like. Yeah. <laughs> Kind That's a lot thing. of pressure. Yeah. So, I mean, you were in all those movies in the 80s, and then you just left Hollywood. Why would you leave L.A. and go to NYU, man? I know, I know. I, I've, I've That's thought you're about not that knowing decision. about partying, right? Yeah, exactly. Is that why are you already out here? So you're not mingling, and then you leave, and you go exactly. to New York? Exactly, dude. Come on, man. I don't man. know what I was thinking. Well, then, where's your agents? <laughs> so, the, the thing Woody is, Woody like, Allen was making a lot of movies in New York. Yeah, I mean, Shit. New York was a viable place in certain ways. It's just that I... I overestimated my ability to be like, I was like, oh, cool. You know, guess what? I was here and I made, got a commercial and this and that. And then I booked Lost Boys. I'm going to go to New York and I'm going to get on Broadway. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to parlay this. Why People did you want to be on Broadway opposed to still just doing movies? Actors find Broadway more respectable than film. Yeah, theater. There was something about theater. Like, you know. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> which one pays more? <laughs> totally. Which one pays more? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, but also, like, okay, an I never see one person that was like, I do theater, and then they get out and boop, boop, in their front. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Right. It's true. <laughs> it was not a good career move in retrospect. At the time, I was trying to be like everybody. Especially because you were killing it. Lost Boys, I The Blonde. It. it seemed like it in retrospect. And I, to tell you the truth, see, that's the thing. Okay, first of all, it's the partying thing. Because I wasn't partying. I wasn't out. I didn't know. I wasn't really seeing that people were, like, psyched about me. You know, I could see that if I went to something and, you know, they... But I wasn't out there kind of cultivating Yeah, that, where people were know? hyping you up like, oh, you did a great job. Yeah, you should come and do this. And you should come. Yeah, yeah like exactly. You, were, you should be in this movie. You know, all that stuff happens at those parties. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and I miss that. And I... And then, um, and I was also, and but then also, you know, it's like one of the reasons I got Lost Boys is because I was trying to be that New York, New York dude, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, let's make it for real. Let's go. Let's do it. You know, let's really go to New York. I have a theater career, even though I got this Lost Boys thing going. I'll let that ride, and then I'll get this theater career, and they'll be like, oh my god, he he went to New York and he has this great theater career, but it didn't work. You know, it yeah. didn't quite work that way. I went to NYU, and then I came out, and it was like, okay, now you're just another actor in his twenties who just got out of college and mm. there's millions of you how you was know? it going to school already having some like hit movies like you can be like your professors mm. are in there talking shit and you're like well you know like, well, let me tell you I've been in uh, <laughs> boys yeah. in the uh, <laughs> picture you know you know no. exactly. it was tempting to be that way I have to say it was tempting especially when things weren't going well you know like if you're like working on something and you, you think you're I don't know how it is with you guys but when I'm doing stuff there are periods of time where I think I'm a total jackass like I really don't know what I'm doing and in those moments, it's nice to be able to be like, what? I know what I'm talking about. I'm a frog. You know what I mean? Forget that. You know? So it's tempting, you know. But I was, you know, when I was talking to this this theater Follow class. You, I just scream out all the time. I'm a frog, brother. Yeah. I'm a frog. <laughs> I need some respect. <laughs> That'll go over well. You know? So when I was talking to this college class uh, on Monday, and I, I, I kind of made this realization maybe even just before I was talking to them because I was like, what's going to be my angle, et cetera, whatever. And really what my angle ended up being was that when I was in college, I was just trying to be better than everybody, as messed up as that is, you know? Like, I wasn't... And, and it goes back to this partying thing, too, it, because it's not just partying. It's about valuing people and valuing relationships for the people and your interaction with the people, not for what they can do for you. And I didn't think I was that way, but I was, actually. I was... I mean, and, and also, there were, I had a lot of good friends, too, so it wasn't like I was 100% that way. But when I think back, my perspective was, who... 
I'm hanging out with these people and that makes me cool. You know, I mean, I wasn't thinking it out loud at the time, but I was overly concerned with kind of being better than or something. And, and I shed that in adult life kind so of recently. When like in, in reality, the coolest kids you ever could have hung out with were all the kids you did movies with in the 80s. Yeah, exactly. Feldman Haim, you know. The classic 90s movies kids. Yeah, exactly. You were one of them. Yeah. He fucking went to New York. I know. Lost uh, your L.A. roots. That's true. what happened. I lost, I lost my edge. You know, my LA edge. <laughs> I was trying to get an edge, you know? Yeah. Living in L.A. It's like you crazy can't. to think, like, you know what I mean? You're already here doing it, and you're like, ah, fuck it. I can just come back and do it, yeah. and I'm going to go to college. And then when you got back, how, you said it wasn't the same. How'd it go? Yeah, it was like, the you know, you're just another actor. And, the, you know, Lost Boys, like, the people who knew Lost Boys, fine, but... That was six years ago, you know, then. So I was out in 92, you know. So, yeah, it was five years ago. You did know? you have the same agent when you came I, back I from did. New York and when you got Lost Boys? So, no. I, so when I got Lost Boys, I got it. I had like a little, a, a really just like a um, classic agent, you know, that you might think, you know. Like he, he was just in there busting in his office. He had a little office in Burbank, you know, just busting. His name was Guy Chateau. And he was just like... Really cool, really chill, just really busted for his clients. So that's how he got me into this room, into this movie, in this big movie, you know. Then I went with a bigger agent. I went with J. Michael Bloom, which at the time, I, I think they went out of business, but probably because they didn't handle me correctly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you get. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Tell this so, kid to go to New York, Jesus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was with them. But the, the thing is, it wasn't, I can't blame them completely. I mean, I can try. I've tried. No, but I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I wasn't really booking that much. And, and Lost Boys, it didn't do amazing in the theaters. It wasn't like I was getting offers off of that, you know. Yeah. I was getting close on stuff. People really loved me, you know, and then they would like, there were a couple times they like over overpriced me you know and i and i lost something it was a big pilot i almost got and they overpriced me and you know and then and then they were i was like i want to go to new york and study theater and you know like go to college and they were like great i want to support that and i think they wanted they didn't want to be the people who are telling a kid not to go to college i think and i wasn't booking all the time it's not like they were like oh we're gonna miss out on money Damn, good people what do you know <laughs> You had the one good people agent in L.A. in the 80s. I mean, yeah, it also could just be that I wasn't working and they were like, whatever. You know, I mean, I, I didn't really book much for them. I booked the, the Blob and a couple of other things and I booked an AT&T commercial, which actually paid off better than all of it, you know, but, you know, so <laughs> that was that. Well, you know? let's talk about Rooster. All right. What's all Rooster? Right. What's okay, the so, movie Rooster? What's it about? I saw. I didn't. I didn't see any research about. It. I just saw that when you started debuting your acting, directing yeah. skills, you started shopping around some Rooster. Yeah. So so Rooster was this. Uh, so I'm always like coming up with some harebrained scheme or a little script. Uh, you know, I've been writing and pitching different things, and sometimes they come about, and sometimes they don't. And so with Rooster, I I, I lived in Spanish Harlem when I was in New York. I was like. Um, a lot of people lived in West Harlem because that was where Columbia University is. And so that was getting like, like people were like, what, you're living in Harlem? Like, is that dangerous or whatever? You know, it's like, no, it's, you know, it's, it's not. And, but East Harlem was still a little dangerous. And so I moved up to East Harlem and because it was cheaper, it was a good apartment. You know, it's like, I had a great, oh my God, it was beautiful two bedroom apartment for like 800 bucks in the, in, it's like unheard of, you know, even at the time was, was a really good apartment. You know, New Yorkers, that's what they talk about. They right. talk about apartments, you know? So it's like, I had this rooster that lived, there was a rooster that lived behind the building because it was up in, it was in, it was in Spanish Harlem and they had a rooster. I don't know. I, I assume just to, to, you know, make the hens, you know, make more hens. You know what I mean? Just keep time. Yeah. Wake right? you up yeah maybe morning. that's what it is too. So, <laughs> Definitely wake you up. So it would wake me up in the morning. It was, it was, and it wasn't just like, oh, oh, when the sun came up. No. It was like, <laughs> it was like, like two, three in the morning oh, and man. really loud. You like, definitely had Puerto Rican neighbors. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Up in, you know, it was like a hundred and. 105th between first and second. You know, it was up there. It was, it was Spanish Harlem, you know, so yeah, maybe, you know. And so, and by the way, wonderful neighborhood. It looked, it was, it was, it was poor. It was, it looked, the streets looked rough, but it was wonderful. Everybody was lovely up there. And shout out to Spanish Harlem. Yeah, totally. Shout out, you know, because it, 
people think that you know people you, you don't go somewhere and you think like you, you can hear stories and be like oh it's and it's like no it's not actually yeah the world you know. the word Harlem seems like oh it's a rough place in New York like it has that yeah it has that uh Stigma, reputation. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, this rooster we used to wake you up all the time. You wrote a movie yeah. about him. Yeah. So I wrote a movie about him. And so I was like, I, that's the only way to get back at things. You know, I was like, write a little movie about it. So, you know. what was the movie about? So or it was like, about this guy ultimately. who 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 wanted to move to the city. It's, it's like my life, kind of like like I, I you know had like a fairly stable life potentially in New Jersey. You know, and I wanted to move to New York. And so I moved to New York, but there was this rooster living behind my building and it ended up driving me crazy. And I ended up going down and shooting the rooster. And then the guys, <laughs> and then the guys that were, were like, they, they were, they were using the rooster to, to fight, you know, it was like a implied, you know, yeah. and they came and they, they, they like kicked my ass and that was the end of it. You know? <laughs> and it was a good little so movie. Funny. Yeah. It was a fun little movie, you know, and I, I needed a movie where I was playing the lead i needed to get back in the game you know so i was like let me do this movie it's you know short easy enough to do my dp was craig zoller who ended up directing writing and directing bone tomahawk so that's how that kind of oh, all thing nice. started yeah. and he was a brilliant dp that's how he started he we shot on 35 millimeter because he knew exactly how to do it cheaply he, he was like i can do 35 millimeter cheaply this is when digital was starting and we were he was like no no we're gonna do it shoot at 35 millimeter so that's the advantage. And Bone Tomahawk has got Kurt Russell, no? Yeah. How yeah. that working? It's, with it's him? a good movie. Brutal as shit. But yeah. It's good. <laughs> it's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> you got to see it. If you like that kind of stuff, I, it was a little, sometimes it would be a little much for me, but it was a really good movie, you know? So you're. You're a classic horror film, dude. You said it's too much yeah. for you. Well, now I'm in, now I'm in the horror genre, but I'm a bit of a wimp. I mean, <laughs> when it comes to it, you know, I mean, I don't watch like you know uh, the Saw movies. You guys know the Saw yeah. movies. Yeah, like yeah. I can't for see gore them. Sake. Yeah, that's like ah, that's like, like you gotta watch that like this. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing. I, I can't handle that stuff. Did you get killed in Bone Tomahawk by the cannibals? No. Oh. No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't really been killed in a movie. Look yet. at you, survivor. <laughs> you know, I'm a survivor. survivor, man. I'm a survivor. You're not going down. <laughs> um, shit, I was just gonna ask something. Well, in Rooster, by the way, Rooster did. Uh, we went to some festivals. We went to like Hampton Film Festival. You know, it's got some big, got a little bit of a festival life. It was That's cool. what I was gonna ask. If you're not into uh, horror, don't you have to go to like? Don't you do like horror film things oh, and yeah, like stuff for the Lost Boys? Yeah, conventions yeah, yeah, and like show up to these things where like it's just all about horror. Yeah, but they, those aren't <laughs> scary. You yeah, know, like, yeah. a, you know, like a, I, uh, not like a, you gotta walk through like a haunted house to get in. Right. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Actually, yeah. how, how obsessed are the Lost Boy fans? You when know, you, some are quite obsessed. You know, the ones who are the vampire fans, they're, they're the ones that get a little more obsessed because because you, know, the you got to watch out so, for right. Yeah, those, those vampire ones, fans. Yeah, because they're like the goth and and but and like you know because the vampires were really sexy. I, I'm told. I can't tell. I'm kidding. But you know, so you know, so uh, you know, so there's that aspect to it that the the, the women get. You know, get but the, in know. an interview I saw you get you and Corey talking about how the Frog Boys get a lot of love though. People yes. show up in Frog Boy outfits yeah. and dressed as the Frog Boys. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And you got you got Frog Boy fans out there, man. I think a Frog Boy show would be a hit, right? I think so too. I right? would watch a Frog Boy show. And you know, even Schumacher, Joel Schumacher, and Richard Donner, they wanted to do a Frog Brothers show. They were talking about doing it. Just never got it. Never got off the ground. So I think it's a good idea. I think that would be good. You and yeah. Corey coming back. You could even get. Some you know, some of them vampires that you haven't killed, or some new yeah. vampires. Who yeah, ki you killed all the vampires in Lost Boys, or you still got more to take out. Yeah, you How, know. how's it going? Because the, there's a new movie. Yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do in the new movie. I hope they don't you know kill all the vampires. You know, leave some for us. Yeah, you know, for the for the current. But there's a new one besides the two you already redone. Well. They were, they were trying to do a reboot of the original, and I don't know if that ever happened. I mean, I, I actually heard they were shooting it and all kinds of stuff, but I don't think it's really happening. And so there's a Lost Boys musical, I hmm. think, that's going on on Broadway, speaking of Broadway. Um, Back I, to Broadway for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. I should, Back to you know, Broadway. Yeah. It's you know, coming. Like, hey, before you criticize Broadway, you know, like... Huge, Who's criticizing? Who, Hugh Jackman. Broadway. Hugh Jackman loves uh, doing plays. Hugh Jackman, I think, is a fake name. Did I ever tell you guys about uh, this? <laughs> really? Huge act, man. Nah. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, all that stuff. You're right. It's a right. fake name. Totally. I don't believe it's his name. <laughs> did you ever consider changing your name as a, for I acting? did. I did change my name. To, you did? When I was doing commercials, I, I changed it to Jamie Jameson. Because my agent thought it was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I was, that's why actually a lot of people on Lost Boys will call me Jamie because it was, that was my name at first. And then I was like, I, I'm going back to Jameson Newlander because Jamie Jameson is just too, it's not me, you know? And so Jameson Newlander is kind of like my parents, you know, they, Jameson Brett Newlander is my name. They, 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 they saw big things for me. I think, you know, they saw royalty. I think I had, and then your agent just turns you into, and they were just go to New York, kill your career. And rename yourself yeah. to this ridiculous <laughs> name. <laughs> different agent. That was a different agent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but agents, that's the theme. Agents. Yeah. Well, let's oh. talk about your web series a little bit you got going on now. Speaking cool. of the Lost Boys, you're going yeah. out here. You got this. Right. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Checking nice. out the Lost Boys in here. And you're taking all the fans out to uh, different locations that you guys shot at, right? Yeah, and like that's kinda right. like kind of doing... Yeah, it's like tell a... Tell-all thing about what went on at the spots and stuff. Yeah, reminisce a little and bring in... Um, so it's like... Uh, you know, I, I kind of thought of this because... You know, we're doing these conventions, and it's a it's a big thing. Like, uh, you know, nostalgia is big right now. And Lost Boys fans are just growing because... It's it's kind of a family movie, you know. So so you got people, and they introduce their kids to, to Lost Boys, and then now we've got like three generations, and you know, in some some cases, four generations of Lost Boys fans. And so I was like, Santa Cruz, nobody's really doing anything with Santa Cruz. Like it's up there, and you know, I went and I went to the comic book store. You know, they had to move the comic book store, which is what the third episode in my web series is about. They had to move the comic book store because. Of the earthquake in '89, yeah, that's just where the original one was is like a lot, right? Yeah, it's a totally, it's just yeah. empty lot with grass growing and stuff yeah. like that. And so, um, but it's still the comic book store is still there, but they had they moved. They moved to like uh, you know a few blocks away, so it's it still looks kind of like the comic book store. You know, it's still got some of the same stuff, and you know, but it's a little different because it's, it's one know. thing I never understand how they survive comic book stores. Yeah, to I this day, well, they, 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 the the fans, I always you know? think like this is a front. Nah, <laughs> it's a front. I, I, think, it's some, those spots, I think all though. comic book stores are really drug dealers underneath it. Nobody's buying comics like so that. What maybe, is going on? But I think people do. My kids, my kids, uh, my kids read comics, really? especially my fifteen-year-old. And you know what? They're expensive. I think that's 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 something we don't quite realize. I would go to the comic book store and you'd be like, "I want to get this," and there's a hundred bucks or something. Like Damn. That. I mean, you know, there you can get away with you know just buying a comic that you're. You know, but if you want the really did you you were a comic book guy? You I would, wasn't you at all. You yeah. weren't. See, it's all acting. You know, yeah. the horror, the yeah. comic. It's all acting. <laughs> I don't like any of this crap. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. You know, I had I had trouble reading. When I say trouble, I I was a slow reader, and then I was like self conscious about it. So that's just kind of. And I didn't get into like reading in the same way. I I read. I was a good student, but I wasn't reading comics like oh yeah this is cool this is awesome you know i i finally got it last year when i was at the comic book store up in santa cruz and uh, talking to the you know and i and i was like okay i get it i get it comics you you get the cinematography as well yeah, that's yeah. right i mean yeah. basically yeah, you yeah. Get the i just i don't know if I, I just didn't get that for a while so when you're pitching you know the re uh, like you know a show for lost boys yeah how does that go? Like, who owns the rights? What if a person says yes? Who has the final say on permission wise? Yeah, these are these are good questions. Like, so, um, so like with this, Warner Brothers owns it, and so and and not just Warner Brothers. I think Donner, Richard Donner, has a piece of it as well, and maybe even Schumacher's estate have a piece of it. That was part of the problem. Is that people had different pieces of it, so it was a little hard to get people to agree back then. So now. You know, now you, so Warner Brothers owns it. And so ultimately we have to work with Warner Brothers. You know, we have to, we get to, you know, they're, they, they have to factor in somehow. Either we have to have it be a big enough thing that we can pay them off or we can work with them. We pitched them before the big shakeup, you know, before like they merged with Discovery or, you know, all that whole thing. And they were like, we're into it. We're going to, we're going to set you up with a, an executive. And, and then it all changed. And so we don't have a foothold there again. And so now it's like about getting enough of a momentum that they'll take us seriously to, to really make it because it's it, it really makes sense with Cobra Kai having been such a big success, right? That. Yeah, Cobra yeah. Kai, you know, totally three, four seasons. But doing you great know what's so yeah. cool about Cobra Kai and what I appreciate about you and Corey and the people who I think it's a tragedy when people who have stereotyped roles or classic film roles and they don't. They're like, no, I would never play that character again, or like, I would <laughs> totally. never bring that person back. I've 
I've been past that or whatever. Right. But I love to see, like, I wouldn't think Karate Kid would do as well if it didn't have the actual people from the right. original film in it. Yeah. I wouldn't have never even watched it. Right, who would have cared? I would never even watched it. Yeah. So, like, I like that, like, if the Frog Boys came back, it still has the possibility to be the real actual Frog Boys that came back and can be yeah. the same storyline. And, like, you yeah. can follow it along and be like, oh, shit. That was the coolest thing for how they kept reaching back. Right. To nostalgic right. Yeah, things from great. Karate Kid and bringing yeah. it back to that's the new so film. Cool. So, so it's what we want now. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. And I, I think that's huge right now. I think everybody's doing that, yeah. remaking everything, trying to bring back nostalgia yeah. from everybody's childhood. So, I think that's, I think that could be big. You should definitely right. keep going with that. Yeah. And like other people, you know, Jason, I mean, uh, Jason Patrick, uh, I've been talking to him about it. And maybe we can find an arc for him on the show. You know what I mean? Bring him back. You know, something would be great. You know, he didn't die in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you think they're doing well with remakes when they do them, or it's I mean, it's like uh, some of them it's like hit and miss. For most I of guess them, so they're, yeah, they're making a lot of remakes, and I don't, I don't like the remake th- situation. I, I don't, I don't like it. I, I just feel like why not come up with new scripts? There's got to be new scripts out there. But, but it, you know, that's how it works. It's a property, and so they people are going to see it, you know, whatever. But I think that's I think for sequels and stuff that's cool, but remakes I'm skeptical of that. I haven't seen a remake yet that's like, oh yeah, that's better than the original or even as good as the original. Yeah. Uh, do you think? Because they say we're in an era right now that is either a big blockbuster or independent movie, and yeah. those movies in the middle kind of like disappear. Yeah. Do you see a way in the future where we can get back to that? Well. Yeah, like that was was so cool about the '80s. Is like Lost Boys was like maybe 17 million or something like that, which, which was uh, not huge. It was just a, but it still was like everybody got paid well, and you know it was like a real movie. Nowadays, yeah, you got the, you're making movies for really little, you know, very small amounts of money or these massive things. So, I think there's always going to be. It's so cyclical that I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back because look at like. We were watching streaming now, and there's commercials again. Right? I'm, I'm glad for that. Like it kind of like sucks, too. but I'm like, yeah, people are gonna start getting paid. Yeah, well, that's true too. And also, I don't mind commercials. Maybe I got maybe you know. I remember being like, oh, you can fast forward the, through the commercials, and then now there's no commercials, and it's like, yeah, but now there's not time to get up and do your laundry, fold your laundry a little bit while you're waiting for the show to come back. <laughs> on. You know what I mean? Like, go get a yeah. soda. Or that's something, exactly you know? what my dad says. Right? <laughs> Watch it on TNT, then you know go yeah. to Netflix. I need some breaks in my <laughs> show. Yeah, exactly. Get a little break. And also, commercials these days are pretty interesting. You know what I mean? Like they make they make pretty like little movies. They make like 30, 30 second little movies. Yeah. You know, Usually so. a little skip thing comes up. I only see five seconds of it. Right. That's how it's always been for me. But now on streaming, you can't do that. On some of the streaming, mm. the, it's it, it breaks for commercial. You you can't even fast well, forward. My thing through. is is that the reason that I love streaming and all these apps is because they came out and they were like five bucks a piece. Right. I'm paying like cable prices right. again. It's back to keep all my <laughs> to keep right. all my apps together. I got apps. I got Hulu. Exactly. I got Disney for the kids. I got yeah. you know what I mean, like Apple Plus. And now you know, I'm paying. Whatever. And I got Hulu Live, which is like eighty dollars right. or some is shit a month. Really? I don't have that. It's like Live. 70, 80 bucks for to watch sports. Right. And, and then, then you're watching the game. Cool. And it's all glitchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It and cuts out and shoots. Oh, connect to your internet. What? Right, and and so I think that's kind of my point is I think it'll come back just like commercials came back and like you know I think that that mid movie that mid level movie might come back but I I have no real information. Well, there's <laughs> a couple of people told me this I don't know how true it is but that the sales of DVDs are sort of coming back. Really, that's DVDs? interesting. DVDs, DVDs. I can't. Not remember. said that. Who's buying them? Yeah, yeah, I don't want to use a DVD anymore. Can't even find a DVD I, player. I can't literally. I was like, I don't have a DVD what? player. I would use the I, PS5. For I, my, yes, <laughs> I have Oppenheimer on DVD now. In my house in Puerto Rico, I have a bunch. But if you put it in the, have you put it yet in the... Yeah, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Is it, I like, it? Is it like to have it because like you... Because I like watching kid, movies used, on demand. Oh, I used to, uh, oh, I used to collect movies. Yeah, I collect movies. Like I collected, like my dad collected VHSs right. in my house. We had like right because that was also the only way VHSs, to have them. and then it grew into like me collecting my own DVDs right. when they came out. And I was like, they were like playing cards for me. I was like, ah, I got, yeah. I got to get all the Godfathers. I got to get all the, you know what I mean? Like I had to collect the series if I had if I liked one of them, the yeah. Mummies. I had all that shit. So maybe I don't know. I was like a little collector, and I come from a country where 
hurricanes. Then you have no internet for a you oh, know, few a days. Point. That's a good point. You know, yeah. good, yeah. nice I, used DVD. Dra- I used to drag my favorite ones down to the basement for tornadoes. I know what you're talking about. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in winter in Nebraska, you don't go anywhere. You just watch movies. So it's yeah. like... And also, you know, when I was in New York, uh, you know, um, after college, we were broke and... You know, uh, we just we didn't have cable. We just had like five or six videotapes that we just watched. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'd watch like whatever That's television how you honestly we could fell get. in love with movies too, and, and yeah. learned the lines, and like you fell in love with the characters. Because I right. used to watch a movie. I could watch a movie over and over, like a yeah. song. You and know people say I mean? that about like, Lost Boys. They're like, I watch Lost Boys. People say every day. Of my life, I watched Lost Boys. <laughs> they, that's really. what, at the at these stretchers. conventions, the, yeah. big, the huge Lost Boy fans. That's yeah. sweet. Any yeah. stalkers? I have not had any bad experiences with fans. You know, no stalkers or anything. Usually, like that. they're pretty cool with the stalkers, and you take them out on dates and shit. You're like, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Instead of stalking, let's make this happen. No, no I, I think that's I mean, what I said. I was like, I could yeah. never have a stalker because I just be like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the on. comments, uh, the more the man. Yeah, let's like, do this. <laughs> keep it coming. Keep it coming. Yeah, who's got two thumbs? <laughs> <on the> stalkers? <laughs> have you seen the, the King of Comedy? King of Comedy with uh, Robert De Niro. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. Like it kind of shows. Like that's the first movie. I'm like, huh? You know what? Having a stalker, <laughs> not yeah. that good of an idea. You know, getting to the hotel room, getting random calls. <laughs> right. Yeah. Having a real stalker is not good, and especially for women. You know, I think that's where it's really. Yeah. I mean, for men, of course, they deal with it. I mean, I'm, you know, good looking guy. I think, but not not like <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not like a real heartthrob. You know, you like, hang out, you, know. you go out on the road with Corey a lot. Corey got stalkers. Yeah. Feldman got stalkers. Yeah, I mean, more so, more in the soccer <laughs> direction than I have, but still, his fans are pretty cool. You yeah. know. Have They're, you hanged out with his angels? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, heard about his angels. Yeah, the angels. I just, there's even a picture of me with a halo on, you know, just being like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I thought that, you know, I I love Feldman, and, and I love his energy and his performing. You know, he's such a great performer and everything like that. That You know, he goes through some nutty phases and I think that Angels was a, a little nutty it was a little like Hugh Hefner like wanting to be Hugh Hefner you know a little bit kind of thing thought but it was that's awesome not a bad idea I thought it was I awesome <laughs> I think Corey that's Feldman a bad with two idea. chicks on his side that's a great look <laughs> well, I saw him in Ralph's in Woodland Hills one time I, was I like, ran into him in Ralph's, Ralph's like, that, that same Ralph's that yeah. same one yeah maybe I saw you over there the one, one time over on, uh, yeah I've been what, going DeSoto, there for years or, no, Renetka yeah, when yeah, that yeah, came, yeah, yeah. I don't want to put out the full location. I don't know who's. Oh, yeah, I don't true. know who's out of your Hey, did right. did you already have your ADs Angels era, or did I just come in right in time? For the AD's Angels. Yeah, it, 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 it hasn't begun yet. AD's Angels? Did you miss it? The <laughs> Dolphin Angels? You miss the Angels? Or you, you, you... No, I, I was asking just to be sure because I want to be around when AD's, AD's a Angels. frequenter lover of strip clubs and all things <laughs> yeah, ladies. That, so. that. Well, that is a nice thing about being around Feldman is that it, there's a lot of beautiful women around Feldman and sometimes scantily clad. You know, so. I love that. I love that. Yeah, we're big, fi- big nice. fans of Feldman on the show. Yeah, yeah it's nice. for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, you know, his uh, his angels. You know, I knew the angels as well. I mean, Courtney also. You know what I mean? And Was there a rotation awesome. of angels? <laughs> I think there were. I don't think every angel was present all the time. So mm. in that sense, how many angels were there? I thought there was just two angels. There were 180. There was no, I'm kidding. 180 <laughs> <laughs> angels on call. It's like like, <laughs> like a lot of them. No, I think they were probably about uh, six or seven. God damn. Angels, maybe yeah. Now when you bring Frog Boys back, are the angels gonna come back and he's gonna? <laughs> they'll be maybe. in there. You guys will be, each have one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, You're classic you vampire killers. That's you gotta the way have we the ladies. Do it. We should do it like we're just total, like just just full on entourage. Yeah, you know, with the ladies. That's a good idea. Did you guys save the world? <laughs> yeah, save the world with the ladies by our side. Save I think that's a good call. That's a good idea. Did Lost Boys create action figures of you guys? You know, there's Fun- Funko Pops uh, of us of the Frog Brothers. They haven't yet done an action figure. Uh, for me, they've done like for David for the you know it's the vampires. I think some of them have had action figures. I think it's going to happen soon because they're doing action figures of all kinds of characters yeah. and like the Frog Brothers. They got to have action figures of the Frog Brothers. My kids are really into action figures, like the really complex ones. You know that, that move. yeah that move with the I articulation. Hates Barbies if they don't they right. don't have the arms that like she can pose and stuff because some no. Barbies are like. Yeah, the whole, exactly. <laughs> the whole arm just moves. You right. don't have no bend in the elbow. It's all about that articulation. Yeah, you know, for I don't the, know why, but levels. she's like, oh, she's like not as excited if I get her one. It's got like, so now I gotta look for the Barbie, and of course, it's like 
three times as much for the Barbie that moves of around. Yeah, Which has expensive exactly. Donna never wants the, the $5 yeah. Barbie with the stick arm. Right. You know? You're like, come on. That's how we started, too. We were like, an action figure was like, you know, a few bucks, you know, and, but it was, that's yeah, what he was. Yeah, but he only was. did this. Yeah, exactly. He's only chopping with the back little button. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like my, my kid, uh, my 15-year-old just got TMNT, these new TMNT action figures, the Ninja Turtle action mm-hmm. figures. And I forget the company, but it's like they did a amazing job on these action figures. And it's like 450 bucks for, for the set. Damn. Yeah. 450? 450. Ah. And that's... That was at what are they the do? price. You know, it, it went up to a thousand pretty quickly. Yeah. Damn. Oh, so you got so now they're worth something. Yeah. It's like an so investment now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're like, hey, hey, hey. I take try it not easy to on think Donatello. About that. He's, yeah, exactly. he's <laughs> worth something. Let's put money on that. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna get repossessed. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That's right. The bank. You some know. people are parenting now. They're like, no, we're gonna keep this one in the plastic. You yeah, know what I mean? Like playing in the hand. I try not to do that. I'm like, just look at this one on the shelf. It'll yeah, be worth just look something. at it. They're like, but I want to play with it. You know, <laughs> that's crazy. So hey. that was crazy. Like you basically cried on command when you wanted to. And right. and, you, and speaking of family life, you got t- uh, two kids, right? Yeah, I got two boys. I two got boys. you know married now. I, I just it was last week that we twenty five years. Not that we've been married, but that I met her twenty five years ago, like last week. Hey, that's Wikipedia cool. says your wife's from Amsterdam. Is that true? That is true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. She How'd was you guys born meet? In- um, she was just an actress in New York, uh, you know, I shouldn't say just, we, we were both struggling and it was a blast. We had lots of good times. I met her at a party in Hoboken, actually. Is that where you started partying? You were like, see, I, I you, you learned started how to party. partying, you getting in there in New York, met your wife. That's what it was. I, I learned how to party. I learned how to party. I learned that, that you can go out and have a good time and you don't have to always be thinking about work and about what, I mean, not just work, you know, when, when it's acting, it's fun. So it doesn't seem like work, but yeah, I learned how to party. And so I, I, I won myself a wife. Nice. You know, I mean, I've always been, I'm kind of a serial monogamous. So, so you, have you been you know. to Amsterdam or she was I've just born been. there and came I, or like, she's she, not really, she lived five years in Amsterdam. Oh, her years. parents were, her dad's Dutch, uh, was born in Amsterdam and, and he, and then, um, they lived there the kind of an ideal life in Amsterdam for five years of her life canals boats you know all this kind of thing bikes you know riding bikes around and then she moved to New Jersey and then it was Damn, all the goodness was over <laughs> yeah exactly what's the smoke <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't see. where are the windmills <laughs> <You know? laughs> so as a seasoned actor auditioning how do you feel about the new way of auditioning that is usually all through the computer? Oh, do yeah, you feel yeah. like you, you know, you can make your presence felt towards casting directors doing, you know, vi- you know, videotapes instead of being in the room? So there's people who do well in the room. Um, there's people like Keith Coogan, you know, the guy I was talking about. He was like. He was like, yeah, it's sort of like, you know, you, 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 have, you have the room, you do the room, and then you do a little scene, and then you got the room again. You know, it's that, that you really, if you do well in the room, that that's cool. I never did great in the room. You know, I mean, obviously with Schumacher, you know, that ex, you know there were some exceptions where I was, you know, where I was like, punch me or whatever. I never sold it in the room. I was always trying, you know, you got this scene you're trying to do, especially if it's a serious scene. And, you know, it requires a degree of emotion and preparation, you know. And so I would get in this in the room and kind of I feel like I, I didn't do that well in the room so for me doing it on doing these auditions on tape is the best thing I love you don't it. have to drive be yeah, stuck in traffic stuff. and, all and that you stuff. don't have to have a job where you know it's like we're all doing side hustles anyway as well because it doesn't always pay the bills and it's like then you don't have to have a job where you have to be able to run off to Hollywood for three hours you know to do an audition you, you can just do it whenever you want to you know you can do it at like 11 at night. You, you know? think you're getting more of what the actor is going to be like or less? Because there's no pressure there. There's no per- people in the room. I what if they show up to the room and everybody's in there and they're like... Yeah, I, I think there's that factor. But also it's like it's more like a set because on, on the set, sure, there's other people there. But you're not trying to act for the people there. You're acting for the camera yeah. on the set. So what I like about the auditions is you can set up the camera... You know, like there's different audition techniques and I'm not, I don't consider myself like a brilliant auditioner, but you know, there's certain techniques in terms of where to look, you know, like, um, you know, like looking your, you know, for like a character here and then you have here, you might look at your environment here or no, you might look at your environment here if you're looking at like a, 
something, you know, and then if you're having thoughts to yourself, you might kind of do this here. So you have all these, you can have these points and, and it, it looks, it really comes across on camera because then when you're talking to the person, your eyes are open and you're engaged here, but then you also get a little bit of, you know what I mean? You can play it that way. And, and so it's like, you can do it just like you might do it on the set. You know, that's why I like it. It's more, it's more like film acting. It's okay. So the other it's closer then. Yeah, the other way is more like I think more like stage acting in a way. You're doing it live. Oh yeah. You know? okay. So, have yeah, you been involved so. in like intimate scenes where you had to prepare with a like you know an actress? I haven't done scenes like that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's the closest. Until the Frog Boys and the yeah, we're gonna be hooked up. The Frog this. Boys and the Angels. <laughs> yeah, That's the right. Angels. That might be the new name. That might go out. Frog, Frog Boys, Boys and, and the Angels. Angels. I like it. <laughs> You'd be like Alan Frog is. Um, Really good with the ladies we discovered in adult life. <laughs> exactly. you know I mean? Alan Frog really learned how to party. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Took it over after he killed those vampires. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I know you've been trying to call me all day, but girl, he just left. And I, I had to wait till he left to call you because I know I said I was going to break up with him. But last night, he did like... A full 180. He was an animal. Where did this come from? Because you know, I've been telling you, it's been like kind of dull and like something changed. And I don't know what his secret is, but I'm trying to find out. Shh. His secret, Sword Vitality. Those remakes they're coming out you said your favorite i saw in an interview you said your favorite horror film was the omen yeah the omen yeah they're coming out with a new one are they really i didn't even know that yeah That's the cool. april 15th or something they're remaking wow. you gotta go see it That's i'll check your it favorite out. flick I mean, right there you might go in though like you know if it's your favorite already yeah you might be upset I, mean, I don't know how you go into the with an open mind or you like this could never beat the original you know it, it ne you never know you know what i mean it's all that that wave of like by the time you get in i think that I don't think that it's going to be as good. I don't see how it's going to be as good. The Omen, I think, was good because of the, because of Richard Donner and because of the acting and stuff like that. I, you know, maybe they'll maybe they'll kick, maybe they'll kick ass. Maybe they will. I don't know. Let's hope for a good Omen. <laughs> Let's hope for a good On Omen. On that note, what's your top five horror films then? From a Ooh, horror actor, a from the guy out here at these conventions, top five horror films. Wow. Okay. On the spot here, as a non-horror, you know, I'm not a enthusiast, you know, but you're, you're in the you're yeah, in the, the industry. So I'm gonna okay. We'll start with Omen. Omen. Um, I actually really loved Poltergeist two, for some reason. You know what I mean? Poltergeist, you know, was cool and everything, but Poltergeist two, I really dug. Um, I uh, let's see. Um. I would put Bone Tomahawk up there, actually, because of I just think as a movie it's really good, and it's it's got the goriest scene that I I've seen. You know, not to give away what it is, I won't give away. You guys <laughs> gotta, gotta go see, see it. it. Yeah. It's, it's cool. <laughs> so that's three. Um, I think Halloween, Halloween classic, somewhere Mike between Myers. Halloween and Halloween two. I can't uh, one of those two. You know, and then. Uh, the other one's a wild card. I mean, like, you know, uh, like Friday the 13th was a significant movie for me when I saw it. You know, it, 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 I, I'll go ahead and say Friday the 13th, the original. Speaking of Friday the 13th, in, a, in, in, a, in the same interview, I think I was watching, uh, I didn't know Corey Feldman killed Jason. Yeah, isn't that wild? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's another thing he did. I never thought about it, but he was like, I killed Jason in Friday the 13th. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, killed exactly. Jason? I gotta see this. <laughs> yeah, play that back. Well, I mean, he sort of killed him because he always comes back, but... Right. Right. Yeah, Corey Feldman out here killing Jason. I didn't even know. He's little, doing everything. Yeah, you know? these little little. That's the thing about Feldman is you you know like when I kind of put it together, it's like you know I go to these conventions. People love me for Lost Boys. Well, Feldman's got that plus the Goonies, Stand by Me, Gremlins, Friday oh, the Thirteenth, yeah, License to Gremlins, Drive, Dream yeah. a Little Dream. Like people love him for every one of those movies, yeah. you know. So Goonies is legendary. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Goonies is a legendary you know, movie. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do the shuffle Great truffle. Legendary. <laughs> <laughs> so then new projects, then you, you're doing um, the Lost Boys things. Yeah, the thing up in Santa Cruz. So yeah. that, that's 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 going along great. I mean, we're... How many times you feel... Or how many times are you working on that? Because Santa Cruz is not close. No. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've been up there four times. Uh, we have three episodes so far, and we have a, a bunch more in the can and stuff where 
getting from those things. But we're also try. I'll be up there again in June. We're gonna in the in the summer. They'll do they do the screening on the beach, you know, and they're gonna have. They oh, do, nice! Right, yeah. they do music, and they. I think they're gonna have Tim Capello, you know, uh, sax guy. You know, the like I still believe sax guy um, from Lost Boys. I think he'll be there, and so they'll do music and stuff like that, and we'll have another, we'll do a show about that and everything. So it's really only, you know, I mean, I going up there a few times. And Speaking of performing, uh, Corey performs at some of these things, right? And I heard you got yeah. on stage and yeah. sang a few songs with them. Yeah, Are you Corey's out there trying to perform some music, <laughs> dropping some albums? What do you guys, what do you got going on musically? Okay, so it's like, I've always, like, you know, every, every actors, I feel like actors want to be, you know, you reach a level and then you're like, you want to be in a band, you know, because like we saw these people, we saw like Mick Jagger, you know, and we saw like, yeah. you know, these rock stars. And so um, I want to be a rock star too. And so I, I'm not really, I don't think I'm going to be a rock star, but I am kind of rocking out a little yeah. bit. And like, feels I'm good starting, up there on that stage. It feels huh? good. Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm starting to sing a little bit, you know, some of this emotional work that I've done it, it 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 opens things up a little bit and I can sing a little better than I used to and I'm singing some 80s songs and, and I'm not yet out there fully with that but Felvin's really supportive you know and he yeah. he he you know I come to his shows and it's great for the fans you know he calls me up there and I'll put on the Alan Frog stuff you know beret and you know like you know military stuff and and it's awesome. We say yeah. people are strange together. You know, yeah, it's yeah. good stuff. You know, it's Ever fun. Ever been in a situation where you're like, you have to make a decision and you're like, huh, what would Alan Frog do? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yet done that. I should, though. Because yeah. Alan Frog is, I think, kind of fierce and, and deliberate in what he does. You know, so I should, I should. Yo, that's the idea from the podcast for you. You should do What Would Alan Frog Do I'm going to try to remember to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. <laughs> what would Alan Frog do? How would Alan Frog handle this? That's funny. What else you got going on besides that? Okay, so um, I got this movie coming out, Mr. Manhattan. It's uh, you know this sort of feel goody kind of Hallmark movie. Not a huge part, but I got you know starting to get some momentum with that. I play a lawyer, you know, which is cool. I have a movie that came out recently, uh, an independent movie with Diane Franklin. You know, Diane Franklin, uh, you know, 80s icon, Better Off Dead and stuff like that. I'm better with faces than names yeah, for most movies, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a, a horror movie together, another horror movie. I play a dad. It's my first dad role. You. You're still coming back to the horror. It, right. It's calling you, man. It's you true, gotta man. Just, I you know, gotta you, gotta, you gotta become one of the killers in the movie by now. You're right, you know? actually. Because you're, right. you're the time. survivor. You never die. I haven't died yet. <laughs> Or at least die in one. For me, Feldman's got it. Because Feldman killed Jason, so maybe maybe Feldman's the one that's got to kill me. We'll see. Yeah, definitely. That'd be a good scene. I think I, I think that's a good <laughs> idea, though. I think... Because also, I don't know. I'm still fighting to kind of like... There's a little leading man in me. There's a bit of a leading man in me. I'm a character actor with a little bit of a leading man, and I'm trying to cultivate that a little bit. And if I can get that, then I could be like... Maybe I could do some horror stuff and maybe be a villain or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. Because I wasn't tough. You know, like I said, with Alan Frog, I wasn't tough. I remember my friend was like... I was like, I want to be tough. You know, I want to be, you know, after Lost Boys, I was like, I want to be one of the tough guys. And he was like, you're not tough. Like, you're, like, you're, you're not tough. And I, and I, I listened to that. I let that affect me. But it doesn't matter that I'm not tough. Yeah. On the camera, I can be tough. It's in there somewhere, you know. So On the camera, you can be that. anything. That's what I love yeah. about film. It's true. That's what I love about it's the right angle Hollywood. And, yeah. Yeah. You can turn anybody into, you know. Whatever you want to turn them into on that camera. Yeah. Are you all you all actors you, as well? Josh is an actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you just did a movie. Why are you laughing? I mean, I don't do. He's um, a, he was an extra in Community too. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. I've done I've done extra work when I moved out here. I've done a nice scene where I got shot in the head. Ooh. I haven't even seen that yet. But so I you think, got killed. I haven't gotten killed. Yeah. See, I, yeah. I got blasted no, he, right in the head. Wow. And he fell so well. Yeah. Is that right? Was a good How fall. was it? Did they do? The like, guy was like, "Welcome to the stunt world." I was like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> For a second, I was like, "Fuck no!" <laughs> I had to fall and take like twenty five falls, and then they took really the pad you? away. I'd do like ten more. You really? have a very and the guy was just over there. face. Yeah, the guy over there. He's like, you gotta keep, you gotta snap your neck, and he just, like, kept, what? He just kept making me snap my neck the whole time. And this dude had like an that eye patch on, <laughs> and like, 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 pants. he was like the head of the of the stunt department. Yeah. I was like, this guy really fucking like lost an eye doing stunts or something. Yeah, I don't know if it was a did. gig, but yeah. you gotta be careful, you know, like the like even if you, there's an A list actor. Rust situation can happen to anybody. I know there was it. Yeah, it was a military movie, and they were firing guns like because I got shot. Boom, and then they were like, 
move out. And then it was like, doom, 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 doom. Wow. And I got hit with like hot shells. Did while you really? I was sitting there trying to just lay down and like, Dude, I have wow. to stay dead. Hot. Yeah, and a few of them were hot on my leg and like, and like they oh, would roll uh, next to me and I was just sitting there just taking the heat. Man. From the, because they're, they're real bullets, real shots, real guns. They're just blanks. Right. Same sound, same everything. Like, right. it's and the shells loud. that come out are going to be the same and shells. And in yeah. those things you're shooting, it was like one of those fake towns up in Simi Valley. So oh, it's yeah. just echo. Like, you're in wow. there and it's like, doo, 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 and it's like, fuck. That's wild. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. And then, but they have two like people fun. on set. Uh, like you said, like there's people there that like you have to check your gun back in every time. Like oh, if yeah, there's a totally. pause or there's like any breaks for anything. Like they they're making sure everything's checked back in. So, yeah. but it's still kind of I can see how things could get. Yeah, I man. It only lost takes, in the it, sauce yeah. over there, you know. Or if somebody had any vindictive, yeah. yeah. If anybody had any vindictive things, like it'd be pretty easy. Yeah, totally. Well, because you have the guns on you while you're just like oh, between yeah. anything things. Anything could happen. Any accident could happen. They got to be really careful. There was this this acting class that I was in uh, as a teenager. The teacher later, a, a number of years later, um, a k- kid was doing a scene from Lethal Weapon. You know that scene where they he has the gun in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. And they took the clip out, but there was a, or something like that. Ooh. But there was already there was still a bullet in the chamber or something mm. like that. And he shouted. You know, I I, th- I don't think he died actually. But oh, damn, damn. Yeah. Damn. Definitely ain't the one. same though. Yeah, well, be. who knows? Because you know, when you don't have a brain. No, I'm kidding. When when <laughs> no, no when uh, it's you know it what I mean. Like like, it could go back or this way. Or yeah, you can go maybe. through your cheek. Yeah, 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 yeah. it could go like back here and not really hit your I mean, brain 50 or something cents like nine that. Nine of them. Definitely one. Right. Exactly. Face. I mean, I'm not saying I'm gonna. <laughs> I would choose to do it, but you know, people do survive. Yeah. Shit. Maybe you. Maybe she get shot to toughen up. Just be like, get me in the shoulder. Let's do it. You know you what I mean? Go out to a thing. <laughs> yeah. Go back into a thing. Maybe you should bring back the punch me in the gut thing at your audition. You're right, actually. I'm going to start you know doing that again. I mean? That's what got it for you. Just be like, shoot That's me. Shoot me in the shoulder. Whatever you want. <laughs> shoot me in the shoulder. Come on. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Well, you got anything else that you're working on? So, uh, let's see. A um, couple movies. You got the documentary thing. Yeah. Hopefully, we're going to see the Frog Boys. I yeah. don't know who's listening out there, but somebody get yeah. the Frog Boys going. Please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that's that. The Santa Cruz thing, I'm going to launch. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to launch an app associated with that pretty soon. Uh, so, that's going on. Okay. Um, Is there know, something bigger than just being able to stream the app? You got anything like you're working on? Is it like a cool new app people should be getting? Why yeah. should we get it? It, I can't talk about it yet, Ooh. but it's going to be cool. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. If you can't talk about it, it must be cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give it away uh, because there's, there's going to be some cool aspects to it. Yeah. Okay. So that. Yeah. And so, you know, just trying to develop projects. I have a bunch of other things that I'm trying to develop that's not worth talking can about Can you give yet, away the name of it so people can look for it? Or the does app? the name give away well, the app is gonna what's going to... I'm pretty sure... We'll see exactly, you know, once we do all our market research. But I'm pretty sure the app's going to be Jameson New Lenders Lost Locations because it's a, an app associated with, you know, uh, looking finding the locations in Santa Cruz. Yeah, you, you should know. probably just shorten that up to the Lost app. Or Lost Locations. <laughs> <you know. laughs> it's a long <laughs> the name. The Lost app, that's good, yeah. <laughs> you but then, like, you can't find name. it. It always disappears in your phone. Right, exactly. Your phone. But that's the thing. My name is so long, you know. <laughs> like, uh, people can go to a, at a party, people can be like, you know, my name's like Tom Smith or whatever. And I'm like, my name's Jameson Newlander. It's just... It's too long, you know. Oh, what I mean, to that's say why all the that. guy tried to ch- change you to Jam and exactly. Jamie or it is whatever. Why. It is why. <laughs> Jamie 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 well, you do have an alcohol brand name. Yeah, Jameson. Do you drink Jameson? Like when you go I, out, just like, are you connected to it? You're like, this is I do, actually. I like Jameson. I, I like Jameson. And I, people have always said my whole life, they've been like, oh, Jameson, like the whiskey. Yeah. You know? And so now I have a response to that. And I just say, yeah, but smoother. Ah. Uh, okay. uh, just get it right there. Get that joke in there. Got it. That's good. That's right? good. How's your wife feel about that one? She she likes she likes she, my like my mom my, my wife like my my wife likes me to be uh kind of kind of cool you know what I mean she likes the cool aspect of it she likes the movie star aspect of it she's an actress too right yeah she's an she's, actress I mean you know we both have at times been like you know there was a time I was doing more of a day job I was in that marketing job I was in a marketing job and she was doing more acting and even so she hasn't broke broken through like I have she was really just doing theater and some smaller movies and stuff very talented but you know it's hard to to break through you know 
Yeah. So, but uh, she but likes what, the she likes the the movie star thing. What about uh, the you kids? Know. You guys are both in the life. You were a young actor. It's a time that you're like, how old are your kids? Uh, Eleven and fifteen. You're fifteen year old. You're like, you know, when I was fifteen, right? It's I, time uh, to start making you know, some money. I was already making <laughs> national commercials, getting yeah, exactly. money in the house. What's going on? I made ten thousand dollars before <laughs> I was, you know. Um, and I expect that. Yeah, you know. Um, interestingly, my kids are uh, just got headshots and just got a manager. Uh, so nice um, though, but they're into it. They're they into like it. it. They're they into like, it. I haven't pushed them into it. Are they Lost Boys fans? Are they? They you can't. Are like they your young dad. Frog Boys? Or are they? I mean, you, they're certainly brothers in the same way that we were brothers as Frog Brothers. But they they're further apart. I mean, me and Feldman are essentially the same age. I mean, yeah. one year apart. Um, they're four years apart. They're awesome. They're great brothers. Sure, they could do Lost Boys stuff, but I'm their dad, so. It's not cool for them to. They would. It wouldn't be cool for them to be too into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. They. They. They love me, and I can tell that they respect the Lost Boys thing, and they think that it might be like a foothold for them. You know. Absolutely. That's but good. um, they they got they got to be cool. You know, you can't like dad too much at yeah, this point. Definitely. You know, you're teenagers. Teenagers, exactly. It'll come back around. They'll be like, wow. It's starting to. My fifteen-year-old <laughs> from time to time is being like. Dad, I just want to know. I think I appreciate you know, like he'll oh, do nice. that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, so, yeah. so sweet. Our kids are getting nice, you know. Appreciate yeah. their parents. They're good boys. Days. Usually, you don't, you know, hit you to like, you know, they're in their thirties. Like, oh, sorry. I yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm done so much. It's just a jackass my whole life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, appreciate you coming on the show. Definitely. It was a great time. It was great. To talk. Um, it was awesome. To yeah, talk to that you was guys. great, man. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Another episode of That's Fucked Up with the legendary. Oh. And our first white guest ever. Is you that are, right? Yeah. No, it's not We've true. We've never no, had no, a white no, guest no, on no, the no, show. No, no. The, Hassan is not. Hassan. The girl who got painted on, technically white. Oh, first white male. On, yes. yes. First white male guest on the there show. We <laughs> We've been looking. We're like, why do we never have any white guests on the show? You know, but these days it's not are. cool. It's not cool anymore. See? You're breaking yeah. the barrier. Yeah, yeah there there you are. are. <laughs> You're breaking over the line. Exactly. <laughs> and I appreciate the advice. I'm going to take you up on the... i never been to a strip club. They've invited me many times. Always said... Yeah, you should there last night. Damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna start partying thanks to you. See, you got yeah. Alejandro, you gotta get out there. Right, making it out there, you know. The party message. Yeah, Alejandro. <laughs> but if I OD from fentanyl, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> if you learn anything from this really podcast bad. today, it's party more yeah. to get what you want in life. <laughs> there you go. Like, that was the moment he went. He strayed, and uh, he's he's dead now. But, <laughs> okay. It's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I know you've been trying to call me all day, but girl, he just left and I, I had to wait till he left to call you because I know I said I was gonna break up with him, but last night he did like a full 180. He was an animal. Where did this come from? Because you know, I've been telling you, it's been like kind of dull and like something changed and I don't know what his secret is, but I'm trying to find out. His secret, Sword Vitality.